In this demonstration, we'll see how to configure Windows Server 2019 with cluster shared volumes. So we start in PowerShell, and the first thing I'm doing is I'm installing the iSCSI target server feature on SEA SVR3. So that's installed. I jump across to Windows Admin Center. I connect to SEA SVR3. I go down to Storage. I then initialize a particular disk that is attached but not currently configured. So I then create a new volume on that initialized disk. I assign the drive letter L. I call it volume L. I set the file system to ReFS. I click Submit. And it creates a volume on SEA SVR3. I then go across and initiate a remote PowerShell session through Windows Admin Center. I authenticate to SEA SVR3 and I create two new firewall rules that allow iSCSI traffic in and out of this particular server. I disconnect my PowerShell session. I open the Server Manager console. And in the Server Manager console, I choose File and Storage Services, and then I select iSCSI. I create an iSCSI virtual disk by connecting to that volume that I just created on SEA SVR3. I call it iSCSI Disk 1. I specify the size as 62.5 gigabytes. I then create a new iSCSI target, and this will allow SEA SVR1 and SEA SVR2 to connect to this iSCSI target. So I add SEA SVR1. I add SEA SVR2. And this will allow both of those servers to access that iSCSI resource. So I click Create, and the disk and the target and the access servers are now configured for SEA SVR3. Now I'm in PowerShell on SEA SVR1. I start the Microsoft iSCSI service. I then start the iSCSI control panel. I connect to SEA SVR3 and the iSCSI connection is initiated. I jump across to SEA SVR2 and I do exactly the same thing. Start the iSCSI service. Start the iSCSI initiator control panel. Connect to SEA SVR3. And now those storage resources are available to SEA SVR1 and SEA SVR2. To verify that, I am back in Server Manager and I can see that there are two offline disks on SEA SVR1 and SEA SVR2. I rescan the storage. And now that iSCSI resource at 62.5 gig is available. So I bring that resource online on SEA SVR1. Now that that resource is online, I create a new volume. I select the 62.5 gig iSCSI resource. I configure it as a 62.5 gig volume. I assign the drive letter V. I configure it as an ReFS volume. And I give it the name CSV1 for cluster shared volume. I click Next. I click Create, and that volume is created on that iSCSI resource. So I jump across to the file of a cluster manager. I can see I've got my two nodes, SEA, SVR1 and 2. I can see that there's no disks. So I add a disk, and it detects that cluster disk 1, the iSCSI resource. So it then adds that to the cluster. And now that that cluster disk 1 is added to the cluster, I can then add it to a cluster shared volume. So I click Add to Cluster Shared Volume. It brings it online as a CSV. I then go to SEA SVR1 and do a directory. 
And I now have the cluster storage directory, which provides access to that iSCSI resource. I jump to EA SVR2 and I see exactly the same directory. So if I put any files or folders in that cluster storage directory, it would then be stored on the cluster shared volume. So in this demonstration, you saw me configure cluster shared volumes on Windows Server 2019 using PowerShell, using iSCSI, using the Server Manager console, and using the failover cluster manager console.